Okay, so as you can tell, I have nothing on my skin. So to begin the makeup, I'm going in with the primer and the one I'm using is the Jane Iredale Smooth Affair Primer, if that will focus. This one I actually forgot that I owned and I've been loving it. It's really good for kind of filling in pores and just giving you like a really smooth base on your skin. So I'm just using my hands to apply that all over. Moving on to foundation, the one I'm using is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation and I use the shade 6.5. So I'm only using two pumps of the foundation because I don't want the face to be too much because I'm going to be focusing on the eyes and the lips for this tutorial. For my foundation brush, I'm using the Zoeva 102 Silk Finish Foundation Brush. Mine's dirty because I used it yesterday. And then just applying my foundation all over. I always begin in the center of my face. This just kind of makes your skin look more flawless and because you don't get the product build up then around your hairline. And then whatever is left on my brush I'm going to use for the perimeters of my face so it doesn't cake up around my hairline. By the way I'm kind of feeling a bit sick at the moment so I apologise if my voice is annoying for some people but I can't do anything about it. I tried to have warm water with lemon and honey to kind of improve it for the video but it's still kind of croaky so I apologize if it's irritating. Moving on to concealer, the one I'm using is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and this is in the shade Ginger. So because the eye makeup and the lips are gonna be really intense, I didn't want to go for concealer that's really light compared to my foundation because I don't want my face makeup to be OTT with the lips and the eyes because it just looks too much altogether. I also forgot how much I loved this concealer. And to blend all of that in, I'm just using my Beauty Blender. This will just take away any of the excess product and it won't leave like real cakey residue on my skin. Then as always to set my concealer, I'm using the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the shade Light. And I'm using this, I actually don't know where this brush is from, but it's just a pointy duo fiber brush. You can also use the Real Technique setting brush, that's what I used to use for this. And I just, I'm patting that into the areas where I applied my concealer. Then to set the rest of my face, I'm using the NARS all day luminous powder foundation and this is in the shade medium 3 stromboli i'll show you it here so this is just like the same color as my foundation because obviously that light powder sometimes can make my face look way too light and i always set my foundation i'm using the zoeva 106 powder brush to apply it if you don't already set your foundation and you find that it doesn't really last throughout the day definitely try setting it because I notice a huge difference even though I don't really have oily skin, well sometimes my T-zone, but for anyone who has oily skin who doesn't set their foundation, you should definitely try it because it makes a huge difference. I forgot how much I love this powder. If you're looking for a good powder foundation or a setting powder, get this. Then to warm up my skin and kind of lightly contour my face but not actually contouring, I'm using the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Dark Tan. I love this, it's not too orangey and it just gives a nice light colour to the skin and because it's the mineralized skin finish powder it's not really thick and heavy because obviously I just applied powder foundation so this doesn't cake up too much. So I'm applying it to my forehead and I'm using a Glamico FB20 brush I think but any kind of powder brush like this and I just kind of focus it in these areas here and then a little bit on my nose as well and obviously underneath here. Moving on to blush, I'm going into the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette and I'm using the shade Easy. So I'm just using my blush on a Nima brush. I'm not sure of the name of this, but there's not that many brushes so you can find it easily on their website. And that's literally all I'm gonna do for blush because I don't want it to be too over the top. And a little bit on my nose. For highlight, I am using my absolute favorite, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighter in the shade So Hollywood, so it's a really nice gold highlight. And I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighting face brush for this. Then I just use my finger for like the tip of my nose, and then I just apply it here on my nose, so not the whole way down my nose, 
just kind of in between my eyebrows and then the tip of my nose and then my cupid's bow. Moving on to eyebrows, I'm just going to brush through them first. I always, always brush through my brows before I apply any product because the product won't go on as well. Moving on to eyebrows, I'm using the Brow Bar To Go. This is actually now from a company called Gerard Cosmetics. Well, it's the same company, just a different name. And this is in the shade Blonde Brunette. So first I go into the lighter powder, which is this one here. And I apply this using my Inglot, I think this is 13P brush, but it's just a really, really small eyeshadow brush. And I use this for the beginning of my eyebrows, so just here with the lighter shadow. And this just gives a nice kind of rounded, soft beginning to my brows because I don't like them when they have like a solid, um, straight beginning. Next, I'm going into the Anastasia Angled Brush. This one's actually broken. I think this one, this is the 14 and this is the 13 and I prefer the 13. So I'm using the darker shadow from the Brow Bar To Go, applying it on my angled brush and then just really lightly applying that through my brows. eyebrows are actually in bits at the moment, I need to get them done. So to make my eyebrows a little bit more defined because obviously they need to be done like I said, they're a little bit bushy, I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and this is in the shade Taupe. This is just to kind of give them um, a bit more of a clean edge so they're not like really really soft. So to make my eyebrows a little bit more defined because obviously they need to be done like I said, they're a little bit bushy. I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and this is in the shade Taupe. This is just to kind of give them um, a bit more of a clean edge so they're not like really, really soft. You can completely skip this step if you want, but I just think if you're doing a dramatic eye, then this kind of makes the eye makeup come together. When your eyebrows are a bit more filled in, it kind of finishes off the look a bit better. And then lastly, to set the eyebrows, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. This is by far the best clear brow gel I've ever tried. Holy shit, your eyebrows just do, like the hairs, do not fall out of place for the whole day until you take your makeup off. It is so good. I will leave links down to the products, like I said and obviously links to where you can buy the Anastasia products if you're not from the US. So like I said, the eye makeup is going to be a bit more intense today. It's still, I think, really wearable. You can pair it with a nude lip is what I kind of usually do. But the first eyeshadow that I'm going into is the Anastasia eyeshadow in the shade Morocco. You can buy these in singles. And I am using the Calamari, where the hell did that come from? I am using the Calamari, I'm not sure of the number of this, number 12 brush and applying this Morocco shade into my crease. So as you can see, I'm just being like so quick with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. This just acts as a transitional shade. And this color is really good for anyone who has blue eyes. I mean, obviously if you have brown or green eyes, you can also wear it, but just this color kind of makes blue eyes pop. So next, I am going to go into the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani eyeshadow palette and I'm picking up the shade Punk. I'm pretty sure you can buy the Urban Decay shades individually as well as the Anastasia ones. I'm not entirely sure, but if you do know, then leave a comment below for anyone who's looking to pick them up. And again, I'm using this on another Nima brush. I'm not sure of the name of this, but it will be on their website. It's like a small 217 brush. And I'm just applying this onto the lids of my eyes. So I'm patting it down. So you wanna make sure you're getting as close to your lash line as possible, and then fading it up. Then after I've applied the kind of first layer of that dark color, I'm going in with a brush that's like a dupe for the MAC 217. Nearly every brush brand has these now. And I'm applying the two colors on this brush, and then, actually no, I'm not. I'm gonna go in with this by itself first in the crease, and then go in with the Morocco and the Punk mixed to blend it out. I know so many people will say that I kind of wear the same makeup looks, but honestly, this is just what works for me. And anytime I wear these kind of makeup looks, even though 
they're similar, they're slightly different and using different products. So many people always ask me to do a tutorial. So I mean, I'm obviously gonna film what people want to see. I will do more color, I swear, but I mean, these ones are obviously kind of more popular and more requested, so that's why I always kind of do these. But if you do have any kind of look in particular that is like a colorful look that you want me to do, tweet me. My Twitter is at Chloe Boucher and tweet me the picture that you'd like me to recreate. Sometimes I just need a bit of inspo. So moving on to underneath my eye, I'm going in with an orange eyeshadow. This one is from Inglot. I'm not sure of the number because it's underneath, but I will leave a link down below. And I'm taking the Morocco color as well on a MAC 217 brush and applying this underneath my eyes. This way, I need another mirror. <laughs> this way your under eye is not gonna be too dark. Obviously you can go in with the punk shade as well if you like, but just I prefer when my under eye is a little bit softer than my top lid. And again, oranges will make blue eyes really pop. Then for the inner corner of my eye, I'm going back into the Gwen Stefani eyeshadow palette and I'm picking up this shade here, which is 1987, and this one here, which is called Bath Water, and using this on a, on a, on a Zoeva 240 brush. So mixing them both together on the brush and then applying it in my inner corner. Then I'm taking the Zoeva Eye Pencil and this is in the shade Rock and Roll Bride, which is like a warm brown with kind of glitter, uh, gold glitter ref reflex. <laughs> if you have not tried the Zoeva Eye Pencils, you need to get one, I'm telling you that now. You can get them from Beauty Bay or whatever. I think it's Beauty Bay or Cult Beauty. I will leave a link down below. They are amazing. So I'm just applying this to my upper waterline. So for my lashes, I'm using the So Su Premium Lashes in the style Katie. These are kind of like the Ardell Wispies. They're really, really nice. I haven't tried them yet, but I already know that I'm gonna like them. And I'm using just a duo lash glue, and I'm gonna apply this off camera because I cannot, for the life of me, do it on camera. So give me a minute. Okay, so I have the eyelashes on now. After I applied them, I then just went in with my Benefit Roller Lash Mascara and applied that to my own lashes. The reason why I do that is because it's way easier to apply the false lashes when you have no mascara on if you're like me and you have long eyelashes. So apply the eyelashes first and then apply your mascara. Okay, moving on to lips. So to start the lips off, I'm using a lip liner and the one I'm using is from Sleek and this is in the shade Raisin. So it's just a really deep purple and obviously lining my lips. So I kind of fill in my lips as well as outline them just because I feel like it makes the lip color last way longer. So for the lip color, I'm going in with the Sleek Matte Me Ultra Smooth Matte Lip Cream in the shade Vino Tinto, so a really dark color. And then just applying that all over my lips. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the hair. I am going to clip in my Foxy Locks clip in extensions and I'm actually doing an up style today. So you guys can probably see that these still have like a wavy kind of curl in them from the last time I curled them, which was actually my last tutorial. So I'm not gonna style them again. They're actually exactly how I want them, the way they are now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab one of the two clip wefts, just brush it through. And I'm actually going to clip this into the side of my hair. And I'll show you the way I'm doing it. I'm just gonna put this over here for the time being. So because I'm gonna be plotting this side of my head, I'm clipping the extensions back because I'm gonna be styling the hair back. Hope you guys can see this. Just clipping it like so. And then you can't actually see when the hair is down but I'm gonna be plaiting it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then I'm just grabbing this side of my head and then plaiting this hair. So you can do a French plait if you're able, but I'm not that good. So I'm just gonna do a regular plait. 
or a braid if you are American. So we're not going the whole way down, I'm just getting a clear elastic and then tying the plait here and leaving the end bit free because I like the kind of waviness. And then I'm just messing this bit up so it's not so perfect. And then pulling down any of my baby hairs like so. So because I'm going to be tying my hair in an up style, I'm going to turn around so you guys can kind of see. I'm just going to grab the bit, so wherever you would usually kind of put your hair in a pony, grab that hair there and then take away the bottom half of it and then you just want to clip in your extensions in this part only. This way it's going to make the ponytail really voluminous, you're not going to see the clips if they're clipped all over your head and it's easier to grab the hair in a pony. So I'm actually clipping this one, these ones forward like so. That was a three clip weft. Then I'm taking another three clip weft. This probably looks so messy on camera. And clipping it normally, just on the crown of my head. Then I'm taking the one clip and clipping that in between those two extensions. And then I'm taking, <laughs> hello. Then I'm taking a two clip weft and clipping it in. I'm literally just clipping these on top of each other because I've got thick hair. If you've got thinner hair, you might have to be a bit more particular. I'm just taking an Invisibobble, that's like a blonde color. So then what you wanna do is just take out the plait and grab your hair up into a ponytail. And if you feel any of the clips kind of showing, just kind of reclip them and reposition them. And then I'm gonna take the plait Hopefully you can see the plait in my hair now. Anyway, doesn't matter if you don't. And tie my hair into a ponytail. So these are the Foxy Locks um, Superior Seamless Clip-In and they are in the, I think it's 22 inch or else the 20 inch, either or. I'm gonna leave all of the information in the description box below. But these are by far, I say it in all my videos, my favorite extensions ever. They're so, so good. I highly recommend them. If you're looking for new extensions, I highly recommend them. They last forever. A lot of people ask if I've toned mine. These are in the shade Latte Blonde. In my last videos, I know they kind of came a bit more ashy, but hopefully this lighting is kind of showing them more true to color. They're more of like a warmy kind of blonde. They also have a huge shade range, so if this color doesn't suit you, there's plenty more to choose from. There's also a huge different range of like the length of the hair and how thick you want the hair. So obviously if you have thicker hair, then you have enough extensions to match the thickness of your hair. That's what I always say. I've gotten extensions in the past and when I clip them in, it's literally like all this thickness and then one little string of the extensions. So these are really thick, really good quality. Love them, highly recommend them. I will leave all of the information about Fox Locks in the description box below. I will also leave all of the information about the makeup products I use down in the description box. So again, if you want to see any of the products, you can check it out too. But yeah, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like I said in my last video, it's basically just like a Facebook newsfeed or an Instagram newsfeed, and you can see when people have uploaded new videos, so it's really handy. But that is it for today, and I will see you guys in my next video. Tweet me any inspos for any makeup that you want me to do.